throughout the whole of Emily in Paris season one, two, and three. So, what is Emily in Paris? It is a Netflix TV show about a girl called Emily who lives in Paris. Oh my God, God. wow. Wow. Wow, Julian. Anyways, so she's living in Paris for like a year um, and she's with this marketing agency, I think that's what she does. It's kind of a bit similar to like what my job is. So basically a lot of people had issues with season one. There's a lot of stereotypes in the TV show. So season two, I'll give the writers the credit. They did really try. They were like, okay, we hear you. We're going to change this. We're going to change that. And then season three, I feel like it just kind of went wild with it's like, we know that this is trash and we know that you're going to continue watching this regardless. And I am one of those people. So season three starts off with Emily. She has a choice. Does she go back to Chicago because her time in Paris is coming to an end? Or does she stay in Paris because she's got a new job offer with her French boss called Sylvie and her American boss from Savoir is Madeleine. Sylvie also worked for Savoir. I forgot to mention Sylvie no longer works for Savoir. She's decided to make her own marketing agency and start up a new business and she's asked Emily to join the team. So season three starts with this dilemma. Oh my god, I really want to work with Sylvie, but like, I don't want to let Madeline down because she's done so much for me. I don't want to leave her alone in a foreign country and she's got no staff. And she's like, I just can't make a choice. I'll work for both. And her whole reasoning for that was just, I can't make a decision because someone's going to be upset. But she says, I want to work with Sylvie. Babe, there's your decision. Quit your job. You think so? Definitely. You gotta follow your dream. Case closed. Next. Even though that's not going to benefit Madeline, sometimes in life, darling, you can't please everyone. And I just really dislike people pleaser kind of characters. Of course, you have to take other people's feelings into consideration when you're making decisions, but at the end of the day, it's your life. You're not obliged to stay with a company. You are allowed to leave at any point in time, even if it is at quite a bad time. You are perfectly within your right to do so and also the fact that she's like oh i can't leave her alone in a foreign country and blah blah madeline made the choice to travel over travel across the pond heavily pregnant and come to paris and continue working so that's how season one begins with this <laughs> dilemma obviously they both find out sylvie's like bitch you're fired you can't quit your job you're fired ah! now the reason why emily is insufferable is that she just doesn't know when to switch off i get it if you find something that you are so passionate about and you found your calling in life and it's something that gives you so much fulfillment then good for you darling i love that for you she manages to twist every single conversation that she has outside of work about work and she's always thinking that oh i could do a social media campaign and then i could contact this person and arrange for like some dinner meeting and i just think girl do you ever just like switch off even though other characters around her are like can we not talk about work right now i wouldn't be surprised if emily would be pitching an idea to someone while they're vomiting in the toilet <laughs> she just never stops she keeps like coming up with all these ideas and everyone's like patrick can you shut the up but then she'll pitch it while she's at work and then it's like, oh my god, that's such an amazing idea. And lo and behold, it's like a huge success every single time. Everything always goes in Emily's favour. And that's not life, right? We want our protagonist to struggle. And even when she talks to other characters and they're like, that's a good idea. She has this look on her face of like, and I'm, <laughs> I'm just so good. She's like such a job's worth, personally. I hate jobs worthy people when like their whole life is just like I'm really amazing at my job and my job is my life and I'll talk about my job all the time because I'm just really really good at my job and if it comes at a point where your job is more important than your friendships it's more important than your relationship it's more important than your holidays that's an addiction darling and you need help stop it get some help so that also brings me to my other point she double books herself for everything so she has a boyfriend and he's going back to london so he throws like a kind of 
going away party and she's like yeah I'll be there and then uh, her boss Sylvie is like we're going to dinner we're gonna go tonight and then Emily rather than being like oh I'm really sorry I've got a really important dinner tonight I really can't miss this can we do tomorrow sorry I didn't finish my sentence basically she tries to do both she tries to go to this dinner and also go to her boyfriend's party rather than just compromise and move it to another day and it wasn't even set in stone like the dinner hadn't even been arranged with this client yet so if you don't speak up and say actually i can't make it because at the end of the day zalim these are out of your working hours so you don't really need to be like promising to go to dinner with this client priorities emily should be there for your boyfriend so obviously she doesn't make it in time for for his going away thing he's upset with her and she's all like why can't you stay here Emily, why can't you go to London? She makes this bloody comment, right, where she's like, I really want to just like go and see him. And I was watching this with my mom. We watched it together. And both of us were like, go to London then, darling. You're only in Paris. It's literally Eurostar away. You just go under the channel like this. You go right onto the channel and it takes you to London St Pancras. Boom, there you are. It takes what? An hour, if that. Just go. Like maybe she's in her American brain. Like, oh my God, this flight is gonna be like several hours away because she's used to how massive America is, right? Europe's not like that, darling. You can be somewhere within the space of an hour. As far as it goes, Alfie as a character, I like him. He's just a straightforward guy. Whenever there's like a romance or like a romantic pain, I do like a mysterious man, right? Uh, because it adds drama, doesn't it? And it's like, oh, we get to uncover all these layers to this guy. And Alfie is just like, what you see is what you get. I appreciate a person who is just upfront and direct and just like communicates. Wow, we love a guy that communicates. I think Alfie is great, but we know he's not gonna be end game, okay? Cause Netflix does this all the time. Whenever there's like a love triangle, it's always like, we know the white guy is end game. The boring, bland white guy is always end game. I am so over this so yeah, El Alfie just makes like a lot of really good points. This is not forever. Like you can literally come to London. Maybe I'll be back in Paris. He's he's said several times, Paris is not really for him. He prefers London. She just doesn't want to know. And obviously she is that way because we all know she's still got feelings for Gabrielle, who is her neighbor. So there's been this will they won't they with Gabrielle, but he is in a relationship with Camille is it Camille or Camille? I don't know. In the show, they say Camille. She was such a great character. Absolutely loved her from season one. Season two, they just really wanted to villainize her. Now season three, I feel like they've further tried to villainize Camille because they've basically made her cheat on Gabrielle with, I can't remember her name, Sophia, I think. She's this like Greek artist that she's working with. And like literally the first scene with them two, I was like, she fancies her. It happens with so many characters that as soon as they're alone, it's like, well, they're obviously going to get together, aren't they? And they're going to get together and then she's going to get with him, he's going to get with her, her's going to get with her, and then he's going to who's the what to the who to the who to the ha. And then it's all like, <laughs> and it's like, I'm in Paris. That's just what Parisians do. That's what French people do. And I'm like, is it though? Cheating is a universal thing, okay? I think it's really unfair just to be like, oh, they're French and they're just so passionate. So like, what do you expect? I feel like this is a big stereotype. Again, I don't really know that much about French culture. Basically, it just felt like a very Americanized view of French relationships and that every single main character ends up having a fling at some point consistently throughout the show. Okay, so Gabrielle, I thought he was quite interesting in the first season because it was the whole will they won't they and now it's just gone on way too long that i'm like i don't even want them to get together well i do because i think they're perfect for each other because they're both <coughs> people emily and gabrielle i mean but gabrielle in this season was so boring. <coughs> every time he was on screen i was like get this mopey face off my screen please and he's just like a mission i felt like we were supposed to feel sorry for him because camille was having some like a love affair so yeah, I just felt like Gabrielle just had no screen presence at all. Maybe the actor's just getting bored of this role. And I mean, I wouldn't blame him. He makes this whole comment while he's drunk in the taxi with Emily, like, I love you both. I love Camille and I love you. And I'm just thinking, well, you've all kind of cheated on each other with each other. Well, Emily and Camille haven't got together, but like, you know, Camille 
has cheated on Gab- Gabrielle. And I'm like, be in a thruple. Have other partners. At this point, you may as well. And like, this is another thing that really frustrates me <laughs> in a lot of like romance uh, dramas and stuff. Like, they'll constantly cheat on each other and do all this. And I'm like, I don't think monogamy is for you, darling. There are other options. Um, like, I don't understand why no TV shows don't like just explore that. And then speaking of affairs, there's also Mindy. Does she have an affair or not? That's the question. So she's with her bandmate called Benoit. Uh, They're in a relationship and suddenly he just becomes really insecure. He's holding things against her all the time. And she's kind of met up with an old school friend who she used to have a crush on back at school um, called Nicola. And he just gets really jealous about it and kind of drives a wedge between them. But it wasn't very clear that they'd split up, at least from my perspective. It was just like they had an argument. I think he just like walked out on her like they had an argument and he left the room. And then before I know it, she's like constantly around this Nicola guy. And then they start getting like, and again, it's all this like, this head thing. And like this, all that, whatever that, whatever the f*** is. And then before you know it, her and Nicola are together. And I was like, did she break up? with Benoit is this like an affair now or not fair or cheating whatever is this uh, what happened with, he just like he just went so I was like okay so so we're here now with this guy and I don't know what it is about this Nicola guy right but he gives me the creeps he reminds me of like if Mr Bean had a son and there's something really like slimy about him it just gives me the like <clears throat> gives me the ick right it's, and every time he was on screen and he was like flirting with Mindy, like, you know, the pit of your stomach is just like, Ooh, I don't like that. And then Mindy's like all over him. Just like, uh, and I'm like, oh, oh my, please stay away from the Mr. Bean guy. So anyway, Mindy is off with this other guy. And then suddenly uh, Benoit like pops up again. <laughs> this scene, it cracked me up. So basically he submitted a song that he wrote. It was like a love song. Mindy and he submitted it to Eurovision so he just like randomly pops up at her house like guess what we're gonna be on Eurovision and she's like oh my god that's amazing and then she's sitting there waiting for Nicola to pick her up and then Nicola rings and he's like yeah so I got a helicopter baby and then she gets in a helicopter and then flies to this um event it's like so they don't have a like he didn't even say hello there was no like sorry to barge in or hey we haven't spoken in a while because i figured if they'd already broke up surely you'd be like sorry for dropping in i know you haven't heard from me in a while or we left things that are weird like there was no clarification of like where they were in their relationship i was like so have they broke up does he know that she's like off with this other man what is happening in here do uh is he okay with this or or like did they did they break up and we're supposed to assume that it had ended i was just so confused and even if things had ended like you don't just pop up at your ex's house just be like yeah by the way we're going eurovision like hello nice to see you too and then there was no goodbye either it was just like next scene she's flown to like south of france or wherever it was is benoit like still sitting in the apartment just like twiddling his thumbs what the f- is going on in here on this day um sylvie again she's got she's married but she has her little side piece i can't remember his name photographer swedish guy he's kind of boring love that for her because the husband knows the husband knows that she has a side piece i think husband also has side piece so i'm like you know what and then side piece no she's she's got a husband but you know what Fair enough. Everyone, everyone's in the know. Everyone knows what's going on. But then her side piece starts to get a bit jealous, and he's kind of like, "Why is your husband always around now? Oh, uh, you know, where is this going? Blah blah blah." And she's like, "You know, I love you. I love you." And then he asks her, like, "So why are you still married?" And she scratches her little head. She's like, "Why am I married?" And so he gets angry and he leaves the event. We all know how it's gonna go. Oh no, Sylvie's left alone with her husband. It's this whole, you know, in the face, all the. It's like, so there's. I feel like it's their way of saying there's still sexual chemistry. Like, I don't feel like there's any sexual chemistry with any of the characters. It's just really like, 
<laughs> so who flirts like that? I don't. I'll, well, to be honest, I don't really flirt. And then a situation arises where, obviously, they both somehow get naked and jump into a pool because there's a bunch of bees swarming them and they, they're going to get stung. So Sylvie and her husband run into the swimming pool, strip off their clothes, and, like, you know when you do the slow turn to whoever you're watching it with and you're just like... And they're going to f*** aren't they? And before you know it, she's like, her husband. It's like, your side piece literally left like three hours ago. What? You said you loved him. Basically, the whole season is a bunch of characters just fancying everyone, kissing a bunch of people, wearing some like bougie outfits to go to all these bougie, very expensive events. Emily's living the life. And when you watch it, you feel like you go on holiday with her. She's chilling by a pool. She's on the beach. But girl is still talking about work. This is what frustrates me, right? Because she's literally living the holiday life. Even though she's there to work and she goes to work, most of her social life is like a one big holiday. And all she can do is talk about work. And I'm like, girl, just live in the moment, please. You're sitting on a beach You've got all these like good looking men fancying you. Every man that Emily interacts with is they just like, Oh well maybe I could give you my number. Maybe I could oh. <laughs> But basically at the end of the season it ends with a wedding and it's revealed that Emily and Gabrielle still have feelings for each other. And then Alfie sat there like, I knew there was some, like, she wasn't giving me her all, you know. And then Alfie gets up and leaves and she doesn't go after him, doesn't explain nothing. Um, and again, Alfie's like, when you don't do anything and you don't say anything, that is still a choice. That still says something. Again, this is why I love Alfie, because he's like, I want you to do stuff. Actions speak louder than words. And I was like, I feel that, Alfie. I totally get you, darling. You know, when people just say a bunch of, it's like, yeah. I would like you to do it though, please. Give me the evidence. So, yeah, and then Alfie leaves and then she just kind of sits there and she's like, Oh no, oh no, Alfie. Alfie, wait. Come back. Actually, she doesn't even do that. That, that I did more than what Emily did. She just sat on a wall and was like, oh. <laughs> It's like, girl, go after him. But obviously she doesn't because she does still love Gabriel. And I'm like, why? Gabriel, whatever. And I'm like, why? Dude, it's so boring. And I get that it's the whole, like, he's the what if, you know? Because they, they never got a chance to actually explore their feelings. They never got a chance to um, actually be together and see how it would be. So I completely get that. Sometimes you have that person where it's like, well, we never actually tried. So what if? How would it be? But yeah, I was just like, oh man, poor Alfie. Why is it always like the better option <laughs> in these kinds of TV shows? They always just get like completely mugged off. Emily doesn't deny or confirm that she still has feelings. But that speaks louder, doesn't it, darling? The fact that you don't say anything, you don't deny it. And so he goes to leave the church. And if I was Alfie, I'd be like, if, she's, if she loved me, and if she really cared for me, she would follow me she would reassure me she obviously doesn't do that she doesn't chase after him she doesn't explain herself even though she wasn't the one that confessed these feelings it came out through someone else's mouth i was just oh man justice for him too. come on like and i feel like they made him like so nice because they want you to feel sorry for but like I don't understand what the writers were trying to achieve with bringing in Alfie because they just made him so likable and so nice. Like a lot of people do this because they do like a love triangle, but they make the second option so much better than the first. And I'm like, what? But why? Like so many like Korean dramas do that. Like I'm always for the underdog. Like the, the My favorite underdog ever, probably Zero from Vampire Night, I was robbed. I was robbed of that romance right there and instead we got incest you know i was team zero all the way and then times a thousand when i found out kaname was her <laughs> brother 15 years later i'm still mad about it can't believe that and also also sorry my thoughts are like all over the place right now and gabrielle is 
the worst love interest not only is he boring and doesn't really do much in this season he's like constantly back and forwards between these two women because so i'm like do you really want a guy that can't make a decision to save his life do you really want a guy that could potentially be getting back with his ex while he's still with you do you want a guy that goes behind your back and does all the things that he's done with you to you when you're actually together so i was like why are they just not in a throuple i don't get it anyway but to be honest alfie deserved better anyway so i'm kind of glad that like you know he doesn't have to stick around with her so the only other saving grace of this tv show is the character luke i love luke <laughs> he's just he's like hilariously weird he's just like he kind of reminds me of like phoebe from friends you know just comes out with these weird one-liners and everyone's just like where where is your brain right now that's luke um so yeah th <laughs> those were my jumbled random thoughts of season three there's probably something that i've missed out there was a little twist at the end as well i won't say what but um it did surprise me i genuinely thought it was gonna go one way and then it didn't i was like oh, what what but at this point i'm like i really couldn't give a if gabrielle and emily got together i'm not rooting for them anymore because i think they're both terrible people but yeah let me know what you thought of season three also what was your favorite emily outfit this season or let me know what was your least favorite emily outfit there was one that i did that i that i saw this season and i was just like oh what is that please but maybe it wasn't as disgusting because i literally can't remember it i'll put a picture up somewhere and hopefully i shall see you whenever i see you <laughs> don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i shall see you later bye <laughs>